Brent, and welcome to The World Transformed. All this week, we're talking about artificial intelligence. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Wednesday. How are you, my friend? I'm going to do my best to be actually intelligent rather than artificially intelligent. So, you know, oh, okay. Um, going for the actual <laughs> organic, genuine intelligence. <laughs> I'm going to dispel that myth, Stephen, along with, along with five others. We've along got, with, uh, five yeah, myths. with several others, yeah. We've got five myths about artificial intelligence, and this comes from Impact Labs. So follow this link. This is a production of the Da Vinci Institute, which, of course, is the home of our good friend Thomas Fry. So he, it's possible. I don't see a byline on this, but it's possible. It's very likely that Thomas himself wrote this piece. So we're going to look at these five myths about artificial intelligence dispelled by our good friend Thomas Fry. And I'm going to tell you right now, Stephen, that I'm not entirely convinced some of these myths. Let's see how it goes. Maybe we need him here to. We'll bring him on and, uh, and you know, bring him back maybe in a week or so, and he can explain to us why we're wrong, or maybe we can, maybe the other way around. We'll see. I think we'll probably have to tell him why he's wrong. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. That seems real right. likely based on the conversations we've had with him in the past. Now, I'm, Thomas obviously is a very smart guy, and one, one of the things that makes this fun is that some of these myths sound almost kind of counter, counterintuitive anyway because I read them and I say, well, is that really a myth? Myth number one is you can differentiate between a machine and a human. For years, we've had these, these chat bots that are unintentionally hilarious because they can't remember from one second, one minute to the next, seems like, and can't make reference to things that talked about in the past and they they always want to go back to certain things that they seem to be comfortable with talking about right ramona uh will always want to talk about her pet frog or something it was funny that's but, right uh, always came back to the pet frog yes so and sweet home alabama always came up <laughs> and it was not organic at all and it was and it was funny and stilted and kind of but, uh, you know, times change. And that's, I think that's what the author here, perhaps Thomas, is saying uh, with this first myth is that uh, we got AIs now that are, uh, are writing stories. Uh, it's different when it's not a conversation, I think. You can have an AI write a, uh, an article that comes across a whole lot better than trying to have a conversation with one. The point is, you know? I would just add the word always. It's a myth that you can always differentiate between a machine and a human because sometimes clearly you can, right? When I got a robocall yeah. on my phone, I know it's a robocall. I know that that's, right. a, that's a computer system there. But as Thomas points out here, or the author, AI is already writing financial news, sports stories, weather reports. We are consuming AI content and having no idea it's coming from AIs. So, in fact, we can't tell it's not. You read something and you assume a human wrote it. But some of what you're reading, some of what you're hearing, some of the interactions you're having, and this is only going to increase day to day, that you're assuming are with human beings are not with human beings. You can't always differentiate between a machine and a human. So if you say always, then I agree that myth number one is, in fact, a myth. All right, what's the second myth? All right, uh, the U.S. is falling behind in the race for AI breakthroughs. It always seems like but we're, we're perpetual underdogs in our own minds, the United States is. Going back to the space race, our, our guys always botch it. Right? And our and, rockets uh, always blow up. But apparently that's just not true in AI. We're not, we're not all that far behind. So China, of course, is, is our competition here. They, they've got the biggest computers in the world uh, right now, and they're pouring lots of government resources into the project, right? They are up and coming, and they get a lot of press. And we keep hearing about how China's making this big play in AI. China's making this big play in AI. And you never hear President Trump or anyone from the Congress or anyone really in a U.S. leadership position saying, we are going to be the big winners in artificial intelligence. But yeah. as we said on the show last night, the, the point is we're in the lead in this race right now. We have achieved that yeah. without a big national program and without anyone saying before this decade is out. Yeah, we haven't had President Trump say, we choose to go to the singularity. You know, he, he hasn't said that. <laughs> That's right. That, that has not occurred. So yeah. ours is more ad hoc. It is more kind of from the ground up. If you can count something being done by the world's biggest whatever Google is as, as happening from the ground up. But, but it is. It's more organic and it's less centralized and it's, there's not the big PR campaign around it. And so you might get the impression reading the media stories that China has taken some big lead in artificial intelligence. And the truth is we've got the lead 
and will likely hold on to it for at least a, a while to come yet, anyhow. All right. Well, what's myth number three then, Phil? Myth number three, AI will automate the economy and put people out of work. Now, he's saying this is a myth, and we've actually discussed this one before. Now, Thomas's point, I'm going to articulate his point as best I can because I think it's a good one, and it's an important one, and it may indeed be a myth that AI will automate the economy and put people out of work. But his point is that artificial intelligence only expands the economy. It only creates more opportunities for how we can interact with each other and only creates new opportunities for us to generate value. So in fact, as many jobs as artificial intelligence destroys, it will eventually, potentially, create more. So in the long run, it won't take people out of the economy. It won't destroy jobs. It'll just create a whole new kind of creative, dynamic job market unlike any that's ever existed before. That in fact, we might have a lot more jobs. In fact, probably will have a lot more jobs if it, if it pans out that way. What do you think, Stephen? That- yeah, we will have a lot more jobs for other AIs. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a great economy if you're an AI it, it, because you can compete within that economy. you got what it takes to participate in that economy. I actually think that myth number three is not a myth. I think it's for real. It's, there is going to I- be some problems uh, transitioning from this economy to the next economy. Yeah. What do you think? You can't say for sure, right? It yep, is possible right. that AI will actually create this huge economic boom and people will have jobs and everything's going to be great. I don't discount that as a possibility, but if I'm going to lay odds, my odds are that no, it comes and eats all the jobs. That, that in fact, human beings working in the productive sex sectors of the economy just goes away because we can't compete. We can't keep up. There's an interesting quote that he shares here. Joel uh, Mokir, an economic historian at Northwest Univers- Northwestern University, observed, we can't predict what jobs will be created in the future, but it's always been like that. I agree. That's true. But to your point, Stephen, we can predict who will get those jobs. It'll be people. Uh, and I, I use the word people broadly here. It will be people that can work 24 hours a day and not gripe about it and not need rest and, uh, and, and be 100% all the time. That describes no human I've ever met. We may well end up in a post-scarcity economy where all our material needs are met and we're all doing creative, fun, wonderful jobs that we do because we love doing them. And it's 100% employment and everyone's employed doing things that they love. But something more has to change for that to happen than just the introduction of AI. Right. There's a missing right. ingredient there. It's the black box out of which the happy post-scarcity economy emerges. When We've never quite been able to define it. It's like the right. underpants gnomes on South Park. Step one is steal people's underpants. Step three is wealth. Right. And step two was <laughs> a, a box with a bunch of question marks in it. Yeah, there's an awkward adolescence that we don't quite know how we're going to navigate, right, uh, between this childhood of AI and, or, that we're in right now and, and adulthood, right? So let's, good luck to us all, is, uh, I guess, is all I can say about that. But, uh, but I will yeah, say, I, I, on the optimistic side, there is one tremendous resource we will have at our disposal to help us figure that out, and that is AI. Exactly. You will have super intelligence, hopefully. What do we do with ourselves now that we can't compete with you? Well, I have some ideas. Yeah, yeah, that's the question that we'll have to ask of the AIs. Okay, now that you're doing all the jobs, can you also tell us what we should do now and also how we can take care of ourselves and live happy lives? Myth number four, AI can remove human bias from decision-making. And I understand what that's about. AI can remove a lot of human bias from decision-making, but... One of the things that has come up in analysis of what's been the output of some of these machine learning and deep learning systems and and others are still lingering biases hanging in there in the in the artificial intelligence's functioning. So I don't know. I I would say that one actually is probably a myth. I, I don't know that we'll ever get the human taint completely out of artificial intelligence, no matter what happens. It's going to carry a little of us with us with it wherever it goes into the future, and probably some of our biases will 
will accompany that. Well, it's potentially a scary problem, isn't it? Because a system called Pro uh, Publica, uh, it was intended to rate which defendants are, are probable repeat offenders, and uh, and it was racist. It was coming out saying that black defendants would, were more more likely more than actually they were, and so and so it was it was a racist program, and so. Is that based on uh, just racist programming, or did did it get its own biases? It's, it's sort of hard to say. I guess what I'm trying to say is what we all want is friendly AI, uh, friendly general intelligence, and um, we humans are far from perfect. And since we're sort of the template that it's being built on, that's kind of scary, isn't it, uh, considering the power that these uh, that these machines will have. To me, what's scary is the subtle stuff we won't catch. Because these big, gross things, yeah. we catch them immediately, right? We look at it and go, well, look, this right. is biased. And you can fix that, right? You can say, you can actually turn the AI on itself and say, look, you're doing something wrong here. Let's try this again, only let's be fair. Something has gone on in the, in the math. It's where we don't see it in the output, but the bias is still there that I think right. we'll really have a, have a hard time with. Ultimately, the AI itself might have to say, you know what? These results that look fair that I'm giving you are actually quite biased. Let me explain. It'll have to tell us how it's how it has uh, been burdened with human biases. But yeah, I, I agree completely that it's the old law of unintended consequences that we think we're absolutely we think we're being completely above board and somehow just in the way we've arranged things, we we've, we've built our biases into there. Okay, finally. Myth number five, artificial intelligence threat to mankind. Is that a myth? Stephen, I put it to you. Or do you want to get Elon Musk on the speed dial here and have him answer it for us? Well, it, his answer is we may be summoning the demon is what he's, act, he's actually used those words. It's not just one guy that we might say is a little, a little eccentric. You know, Stephen Hawking was very scared of, of AI and, and uh, the risk that it, it poses. There's plenty of smart people looking at artificial intelligence going, you know what, this is a big deal. We've, we've either got to not do it, which doesn't seem to be a, uh, an option, or we've got to do it right. I think that we just got to do it right, Bill. I mean, we get, it seems to me we, get, kind of, we kind of get one shot at this. So. We get the one shot. The, the, the line here is the truth is we simply don't know where AI will lead us, but that doesn't mean murderous terminators are going to start stalking the streets. That's true. It also... Yeah doesn't mean they won't. The fact that we don't know what's going to happen with artificial intelligence, to me, indicates that it being a threat to mankind is not a myth. It's a, poss it's a very real possibility. And I think that kind of goes back to the one about putting people out of work. A couple of these are things where, yeah, you can predict one way or you can predict the other way, but as long as that possibility exists, and I think there's a very strong possibility here and in the, and in the employment, you've got to be aware of those risks be thinking about them and be planning and working accordingly and absolutely make the best of that one shot that you have. Right. I want to emphasize relinquishment doesn't seem to be a good option either. It seems like the only thing we can do is uh, hope for ethical people to be involved in this that you know, know what they're doing and uh, get it right the first time. So, how many How many countries did we say last night are working on this? Are they all going to relinquish at the same time? So unilateral relinquishment will never work. And since you can't ensure universal relinquishment, we got one choice and one choice only. And that's to push on with artificial intelligence. And speaking of pushing on with artificial intelligence, we're going to be back on Friday. We're going to conclude this three-part series on AI. Stephen, been great talking with you. It's been great having you all with us. And until next time, live to see you.